Hi everyone! Peter invited us to his court today, and while I was still on my way with the escalator and the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn, he had already beat me to it there with his bike, because that's how judges get to work in Berlin. Hi students, uh, I welcome you here in Berlin in the center of the city west, uh, in front of my courthouse. Very old building, one of the few buildings uh, which survived uh, the war. And unfortunately we do not have you here. Uh, normally in the last years I have my students in presence here, but nowadays we must do it like this. So, and you see behind us uh, the America House. It's just across the road and the America House is a very important building for us Berliners because during the Cold War uh, we had many, many cultural events in the America House. And as you may know, uh, the American troops protected us in the Cold War before the Soviets. And so this is how we started off. First we went through the door and security and then we got onto the first floor. Next, we would check out the big courtroom. The architecture already here in the entrance hall is amazing. And maybe even a little bit intimidating. But let's hear it from Peter for some historical facts. It was built in 1907 uh, as a courthouse for administration law matters. It was shut down during the Nazi time in 1933 until 1945. And then it was reopened as uh, a courthouse is the highest federal court for administration law matters. And uh, after the reunification of Germany, uh, it was downsized uh, as a Berlin courthouse, and that's a courthouse in now Einberg. This is the biggest courtroom we had a look at, and you can see from the pictures it's huge, and it's the only one that can be used in pandemic times. I gotta say the view from the judge's seat was pretty cool. You can see the presidents of the courts, the former presidents starting at 1970, and the pictures of the presidents until the end of the Bundesverwaltungsgericht, meaning the federal administration. Now let's hear it from Peter for some specifics on how the court is structured. Behind me you can see the bench, the bench where the judges sit. We do not have a jury system as you have in America. We only have a system which works with professional judges. And if you look to the right and to the left, you see the tables where the parties sit. The plaintiff's party, the defendant's party. This courthouse deals with administration law matters. It's something that the Prussian government and the Prussian legislator introduced in the 19th century. And in this courthouse, many, many cases have been decided. In particular, the most important ones, like cases regarding the building of nuclear power plants or regarding the building of airports. So, we are in the same room, in the same courtroom, and behind me you see a balcony. And just a question for you. What do you think the balcony was for? I can imagine you might hesitate to answer. Some of my students in former times thought that that was where the secret service was sitting, but that was not the case. The balcony was made for the musicians, since the president of this courtroom used this room also as a party room and the musicians played for the parties. And as we left the courtroom, we had a closer look at our surroundings, at the sculptures and the figurines, and I asked Peter if there was a story there. Outside, behind me, you see Justitia, goddess Justitia, who oversees the judiciary and 
who is important for us judges because we have to decide the cases only according to law and we are not bound by any other superior authority. Justitia protects us. And now we can go over to something that is very disturbing and should be in your mind if you work as a lawyer. As you see here, we have a table where all the judges who worked here during the Third Reich and had a Jewish background are listed. And as you can see, 25% of the churches had a Jewish background in this courthouse. And during the Third Reich, you can imagine what happened to them. They were forced to quit the services and many of them had to emigrate. And some of them, for example, Mr. Krona here, was even uh, murdered at one of the concentration camps. You should keep in mind dictators The first thing they do, they want to destroy the justice system. And if you work in the judiciary or if you work as a lawyer, keep that always in mind that we must prevent this for the future. So, with a lot left for us to think about, We decided to head back down in order to find out what judges do when they're not thinking about the integrity of our justice system and justitia. So we are here now on the first floor, as you have seen. Uh, first, uh, here is our library where we have to work. It's a tough job as a judge, you can imagine. That's why we have on the opposite side our lounge uh, where we can relax. So we decided to check out the lounge more closely. It had everything it needs, a coffee machine, comfy chairs, a place for your robe if you're a fancy judge, and art on the walls. And that was my favorite part. These are young upcoming artists that the court decides to showcase and to give them a platform where they can present their art. Especially local artists from Berlin are featured here. I think I could have spent all day on that balcony, but duty calls and so we headed on down to check out Peter's office and to find out where the real work happens. So you are here in my office uh, and what you see is a lot of paper, 26 years of uh, life of a church as you see. All that I wrote uh, as a professor, as well as some of my books, uh, but some of my old, old cases you see here in paperwork, but that is not the usual way we work today. Yeah? But I collected it, of course, uh, and in a few years when uh, I will be pensioned, then I will throw it all away. Huh? So, that is, of course, the usual way we work as charges as well. Huh? We only have electronic files, as you see, and we work with screens, as you do, and printers, and most of the time, I am in my courthouse, I work here in front of my, uh, my desktop here and uh, work on electronic files. In the courtrooms, you see, uh, that we have sessions, live present sessions, that is not the usual way we have that max uh, once a week. Huh? But the remaining 50 hours, we are in front of our screens. So, at this point, my head was full of new impressions, and we decided to step outside to get some fresh air. And yeah, now, in, in our final location here in my courthouse, and that is our park, our little park. But it's not as little as it seems, huh? it uh, has around uh, 3,000 square meters. Huh? And just imagine, we are in the center of West Berlin and uh, the courthouse has its own park. Uh, it's nice to have. Uh, unfortunately we do not use it very often because we have to work of course uh, but sometimes uh, we make our summer parties here and 
it's just nice to have and we are all happy that this has not been sold yet but I can imagine if we run out of money in Berlin they will sell the last park here in the middle of the center here and so if we lose it that would be very unfortunate. And so I got back to the S-Bahn and headed home. I think my main takeaway from today was that there's so much history all around us and the things we see and the things we do. And even though our jobs are so future oriented, you know, trying to create a better future, it's important to remember history in order to actually kind of do that. <laughs>